Now in this video we are going to look at the interior wall framing. Uh, we'll just kind of put one wall in at a time for our 850 square foot two bedroom single story house. And here we just have a wall 16 inches on center. Not a lot of uh, complication here. Again we could always move this stud back to um, have better channel nailing whenever we nail in. I mean if you could just imagine yeah, for this right here, you've got to put two nails, two 16D nails here, two in the center, and then two um, down here, maybe about 16 inches off of the ground, maybe about 16 inches away from the top. And then this is um, with a hammer, you know, a nail gun, maybe you can do it a little easier, but when this stud's in the way, when you have a stud right here, it uh, can be a little more difficult. If this stud's back, you're 16 inches or you have a 14 and a half inch bay here from here to the stud um, you're going to be able to take and nail this with a nail gun a little bit easier or with a hammer and nails and believe it or not that's what I used to use I think I used um, a hammer without a nail gun probably for um, at least the first uh, 10 years of my career could have been 15 so here's the wall that would be separating the bathroom from the living room. Here's the front door. Bathroom wall. A lot of times uh, you might want to make this a two by six wall. You have a three inch pipe here. And I'm probably going to do it uh, uh, in one of the future videos. Show you how to fur out the wall. Um, to me it's a little bit easier to fur out the wall than to put a two by six wall in here for, for just for one pipe. If I was going to go with cast iron or something like that, yes, I would probably use a two by six wall. So what you have is a three a pipe with a three inch inside diameter. And it produces, um, you know, if you put a fitting on here, which we are going to have to do, um, you could have a maybe three and three quarter inch um, or even a four inch pipe diameter and that's not going to go in a three and a half inch wall too good. It will also be important for this wall right here where the bathtub goes for you to center a bay in here. You can see where we don't have this laid out at 16 inches on center. We need to be able to put a faucet, um, a bathtub valve, shower valve or just a bathtub, whatever you're going to be using. It's going to be installed in the wall here. If you have a stud, if I just went 16 inches on center here, you could see where this stud could be in the way. So going to have to center a bay in here in the center of the bathtub. The bathtub's 30 inches wide. Then go to the center, 15 inches, and then go uh, maybe 7 inches to each side. So that we have a 14 inch bay in the center there. And again, if you want to make it a little closer, you can always measure the valve, find out how big the valve is going to be. If the valve is only eight inches wide, you could tighten this up a little bit. And then of course we have our channel here um, for, or our ear, whatever you want to refer to it as, the um, for the next top plate um, for the wall that's going to be in the closet here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our bathroom door. And you're probably wondering, wait a minute, how come the door's not on this side over here? Well, it can be. If you change the design of the bathroom, you can move the door over here. I like to have the door closest to the amount of traffic that I feel is going to be in the house. And that's probably going to be from the living room and the dining room and the kitchen or even the inside, I mean the exterior coming through the front door or coming through the back door. If this door is moved over here, you're only talking of uh, maybe another foot. You know, if we moved it over maybe two feet, not that big of a deal. So if you wanted to reverse the bathroom and have the toilet over here, the sink over here, and the bathtub, of course, could stay where it's at. You could just simply move the door over, personal preference. And here we have um, a couple of blocks for a medicine cabinet. If you're going to build a medicine cabinet, you might want to frame put some blocks in there because on this side of the wall you're going to have drywall. The drywall is going to go all the way through but on the other side of the wall it's going to need to have an opening so that you can insert the medicine cabinet into the opening. 
Now let's take a look at the door framing here. You can see where the, the wall or the trimmers aren't up against the wall framing studs. And that's because I framed this a little different. If you go back and look at the original video uh, or one of the original videos, you could see where the header is a little smaller, but I pulled the framing studs in from the wall. So this was in about three quarters of an inch. It was away from the edge here and that wouldn't be a big deal you could do it either way but if you wanted to have the wall framing um, corner the corner of the closet inside if you want to have that tight then you could simply frame it like this frame the have the header go full length to the um, wall framing studs at each end and then just simply pull the trimmers in a little bit to adjust for the width of the door and of course this will allow you to center the door in this area center it in the closet also medicine cabinet here wall framing and of course i put a block in here and even though i didn't draw blocks at every door opening if you have a situation where the wall framing studs are going to be up against a wall like this it's probably not going to be moving but these two boards could actually move and uh, that's probably not going to happen if you put a block in here. If you have a block here and a block here, it's going to stabilize these, um, the trimmer and the king stud here a little, going to make it a little stronger. And I would highly recommend doing that in a situation like this. So again, the bathroom door. Our top plates, if you notice too, are one by fours. That's for the wall. That's for the roof trusses. So the roof trusses need to be able to move up and down a little bit and so you're going to every direction wherever we're going to be going perpendicular to the wall framing trusses the wall framing trusses are going to go from front to back back to front and uh, which you'll see in a future video and um, then you'll have truss clips little angle brackets that allow the trusses to move up and down and they're not supposed to move after the house is built even though that's another problem that uh, we have had and that's um, truss uplift and uh, I do have some videos on that also you can just simply type that in you're probably going to find them on YouTube let's go ahead and go to the closet remember, remember this is a closet coming out of the hallway the hallway is right here the hallways on the other side of this wall and then we have a wall here simple wall to frame and this one here is going to be separating the two closets closet in the bedroom closet coming out of the hallway put our next wall in there and then take a look at our closet header and the height on this the height on this i'm you know this might not be the same as the height on your doors or your windows you might need to lower this or raise it depending upon the rough opening required by the closet door that you're going to use as the finished door. Um, a lot of times uh, I come into a job and they have a standard height header and then you, you see somebody came in and they put a piece of uh, carpenter trim, you know, uh, maybe even a one by four or a two by four and they trim out the opening because it uh, it wasn't the right height so having it too low um, could be a problem having it too high isn't going to be that big of a problem if it's too low you're going to have to do something you're going to have to either get another closet door or um, rebuild the wall so make sure you um, that would that would go to all doors make sure that you find out what the rough opening is the requirement for all of the doors you frame in your house including a standard door like we have here going into the bedroom and then the bottom here and then you will be using pins that will be um, fastened you will have a special device i want to say a gun but that's basically what we used to call them it was a um, gun to shoot down the pins that would go through the framing plates into the concrete to prevent the bottom plates from moving and again, there are other things you can use for that to fasten, but that's what we used to use. A view from the inside, equally spaced the trimmers here so that we're centering the door. 
in the closet. Another view of the other closet here and with the tremors pulled over so that we have the right correct rough opening here and the um, centering it, centering it on the inside of the closet. So our next wall here dividing the two bedrooms and then the door that would be going into the other bedroom. Again our 1x4 top plate, 16 inch on center wall stud spacing, our channel with our top plate connecting the two walls together, our another uh, channel here with our notch out for the um, top plate that you would have here. The door to the bedroom, view of it there you can see where this is centered. Now this is a problem that I think I had the original closet at three foot um, rough framing. I had to make it larger and the reason why I made it larger was so that I could frame this out like this. to where I could have a king stud on one side, a trimmer, a king stud and a trimmer with a 2-6 door. So in case you were wondering why I did that um, in uh, one of the previous videos I've already made, this is the reason why. And you can change it. You can make these wall studs. I can have put a 1x4 on the side here if I wanted to or on each side if I needed to make it smaller you can adjust it I just didn't do it this is the reason why I did that uh, backside back view of the channel here for the other wall that's going to intersect it and then again the door opening for our laundry room area corner and here's the plumbing for the laundry again another simple wall or I should say not too difficult to build. And you can use the 2x4s as the top plates. Um, you can use 1x4 if you want. The 2x4s can be installed as long as they're not going to be in the way of a truss. If you have a roof truss that's going to sit on top of this area, then this is going to have to be a 1x um, top plate. It's going to have to be smaller. You do not want your trusses sitting on top of the wall framing plates on the interior of a wall unless it is engineered specifically for that type of design. Now here we have the top plate extending past and that's because it's going to connect into a wall you're going to see here in a, in a second but I have strategically laid everything out. I have all the walls butting up against the ones that are going to provide you with what I feel is the most efficient and effective way for framing the interior of this house. But again, you can make any modifications you feel like you need to. And then let's go ahead and put the wall in here so you can see what we're talking about. This plate, since it's continuous on the top, will tie this wall to this wall here, providing us with a nice um, connection. And you can see where if this wall here was to butt up against this, and this wall here was to butt up against this one here. We could do the same thing. You could have the same connection. It would just be reversed. So this, if that was the case, then this wall butted up against here. Then this wall right here would be continuous. And then the framing like this would now be on this wall here. Now let's go ahead and install our last wall. The wall for the closet to separate the bedroom number two. From its closet and of course the header the door opening is centered from the inside of the closet you can always center this from the outside of the opening also so the outside of the opening would go from this end of the wall to this end of the wall on the inside it would go from this part of the wall to this part of the wall here so you that's just a personal preference and something that wouldn't be difficult to change. Now here's something I'm going to point out. I have a design for this door here, but this is a tight area. You're going to have to make sure that if you make any modifications to the door or, you, or the wall here, you move it forward a little bit, for example. You need to make sure that this door that you put in here is going to be small enough to where it will open all the way. So I've seen this before where the door is installed and it 
hits the wall about here. You can't have that happen in your design. Or should I say that you don't want that to happen in your design. So there it is. There's the bedroom. There's the house. And that is it for this tutorial. If I make another video with the measurements for all of the openings in the walls, I will put a link to it at the end of this video.